Welcome to Shorty Supercoach, welcome to the weekend preview. We've got Langer's back, you may remember him, the buyer's expert I referred to him as, but he's back now for just the regular segment. How are you, mate? Yes, yeah, good, Shorty, good to be back, just for a, just a normal show this time. Definitely, and there's a little bit going on, obviously at this stage of the season, not too many trades to work with, so we've got to be pretty careful, but there are a few guys that we're just discussing off air that are certainly worth talking about, whether people have the money or the amount of trades left to be mm. dancing around those options. Sometimes you might really want to be thinking about what you're doing in three, four weeks' time than getting excited and going bang this week. But a few of those guys, like Gorn, Salwood, a couple of those players, what are your thoughts on those? Yeah, there's a few uh, high break-evens and a few low prices of some players, but we probably don't all have the liberty of a lot of trades to afford them. Um, so far this week, I have gone a bit early on Salwood. Um, I do need some more firepower in, in the middle and I could go sell it and he's a good price. Um, I'm at that point as well where I've got probably a healthy amount of trades. I've got eight left um, mm. if I don't use any this week. Um, but yeah, I need. I probably almost need to start thinking about just holding a little bit yeah. um, or weighing up between holding the trades or if I want to maybe creep up a little bit more in the rankings and get, get that firepower in the middle. So, yeah. But yeah, there is a few good a few good prospects if you have the trades to burn them. Yeah, it's a fine line because you don't want to be like, yeah, I'll get these points now. But then you inevitably lose out on points when you're burnt for trades late in the mm. season. You're copping a zero or something like that. So we were talking about that balance between points versus price. You know, Do you wait for a guy to drop a little bit and save you 30K or do you pounce on the points? You, know, you might cop a, a 65 and then you give up a bloke who's scoring 110, but it's saved you 30 or 40K. I think now's the time of the season where you really got to look for those points, as you sort of touched on. Mm. Probably if money's pretty tight for you and you don't have too many guys on your bench who are making some cash and you pretty much need every dollar you can get, yep. it's always horses for courses, but it is definitely at that stage. And I think most people probably have your five to eight trades left now. Mm. There'll be the old outlier who's... Burnt a lot of them, got one <laughs> yep. or two, and there might even be the very rare that have tens and tens. Of t yeah, because there are some people who really rate that having a big stack of trades late and yeah. going hard later. But I think most will be in our boat. I've yeah. got six. I think I'll probably use one. Elliot Yo's man, I'm looking at bringing in. Yep. Um, I want to talk about Hugh Greenwood though. He's back, yes. and he's a good example for the what we Jack just talking about because he's. Still got a good break even. He's still going to definitely make his money. He's scoring well, mm. getting some midfield time in that Crows rotation. But what's your thoughts on him? Uh, last week, I traded him for Elliot Yo. Um, if I didn't, I would have copped a donut. And a lot of people mm. were saying, you know, don't trade him. He's still got money to make, um, which I thought was, you know, it's a, it's a valuable opinion to have. It's a good one. Um, mm. My opinion is, though, that at this stage of the season, if you've got the money, uh, for example, Greenwood to Yo, to pull the trigger on it, um, trades permitting, of course, yeah, because um, we we just need to start getting the points on field um, for things like that. Um, what what's the point of keeping Greenwood? You know, he's scoring well. Um, he might get the odd eighties, nineties, um, but if I can get Elliot Yo, who you know he did score eighty seven when I brought him in, but he should be scoring you know up about one ten, one twenty. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that would be a, a good thing to do is to yeah. move him on to get the points. Yeah, not a bad situation to be in because he will make you money if you yeah. choose to hold, but equally you could get some points. And we often talk about early in the season, it's hard to predict what's going to go on. We talk about trade plans and that, and you can sort of get a gauge of where you'll be at, mm. but it's hard. But at this stage of the season, most people probably got like a, a final spot in their midfield or a final spot in their back line. Mm. I think the equation can be pretty easy to work out. So that's what you should probably be doing at this stage of the season. you got five, six trades left, 50K in the bank. You should probably be outlining who's in your gun at the moment. Yeah. You know, are you looking to get sold in that final spot? Things like that. It shouldn't be too hard to predict. And that should give you a fair gauge whether you desperately need money, do you need a downgrade, or you do you already have the players on the bench to already making you that money because mm. you don't want to burn a trade that makes you money but in the end you probably didn't need that yep. and then in the end you might be going 
gee, I made that extra coin, but I really need a sideways trade at round 21 because the bloke's <laughs> yeah. been, you know, put on ice for the rest of the season. So, yeah. yeah, that's always worth noting as well. But a few guys to look at those upgrades. Maybe not now. I know you're looking at Salwood, but it's a good debate again. Gorn is a tough one, I think. A lot of people went for him last week. He didn't yeah, exactly I, deliver. I went for him last week. Um, yeah. I think if you were to get him last week, that was the week to do it because he's got a BE of 120 now, but his scoring hasn't been super fantastic. Mm. So um, I think there would be better options. Archie Smith has been emitted from Brisbane side. I doubt he'll play again for the rest of the year. Yeah. So Steph Martin might even be an option, uh, unbelievably, considering yeah. he scored 57, but <laughs> we know what his form is um, when Archie Smith is out of the side. So yeah. um, Matthew Cruz has been just scoring crazily good. A lot of the Carlton stuff, guys yeah. have been scoring good. So um, I wouldn't say no to getting Cruz or even Steph Martin over Gorn unless Gorn you know, shows us he can score the way mm. he's known to this week, um, in which case he's 120 BE. We'll hopefully bring him down a little bit for next week. But yeah. 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 No, it's a good point. And a few key forwards in that forward line as well. Tommy mm. Lynch, you were mentioning Josh Kennedy. A yeah, few he, guys might be looking at. He's back in after a long absence. He's got a, a break even of 156. So unless he kicks 12 goals, as we said, yeah. against Frio, which is possible. Yeah, but, it is. Um, he should be going down and he'll be about 420K next year. So even mm. Greenwood to Josh Kennedy next week. Yeah. Um, they've got, I think one or two games left at Subi, um, or a relatively easy run towards yeah. the end. So you'd, you'd back Kennedy in to kick a few goals and he'll be chasing that Coleman after a few weeks yeah. on the sideline. So Yes, he will. Still in the race too, still isn't there. he? Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, so Joel Sowell, I think you mentioned his uh, break even around 160. So again, it's a horses for courses. Yeah. If you feel like you don't need that coin, then go out and get him. He'll drop in price, but he'll probably get you 120 points. Yeah, so exactly right. That's um, what we're talking about. He, he did get 120 in his comeback game. He, apparently, he was tagged by Barry. I didn't notice Barry yeah. all night. He still had um, 24 yeah. touches and nine tackles, um, yeah. so I would. So I think that's what saved his score a bit. But if you can get 120 after a concussion and a week off, I think yeah. he's uh, quite comfortable to, to say that he'd be scoring pretty consistently for the rest of the year. Yeah, most definitely. And, you mentioned Kennedy back, a few other guys in, obviously Gaz, you mentioned he still has to get through the fitness test. Yep, uh, I think Rip Triple M was saying he's got a fitness test, yeah. but he should be good to go. And who else do we have? Toby, Toby Green, Green Zach yeah. Williams will probably affect the few. He'd be a good one to have at D6. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Be great because I think it's official now that he's taken over that role from Heath Shaw yeah. um, as, the, as the running defender for GWS. Yeah. So he's pumped out some really good scores. Um, Probably next year would be a really good year to have him as well as when he gets that consistency um, mm, as well. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, mate. Well, I reckon we've just about cut it off there. I don't think yeah. uh, there's anything else we wanted to get through. So thanks for joining me, mate. No good to have you on the show. Thank you. And uh, I'm sure I'll have you back soon enough. Thanks, mate. And, uh, yeah, by all means, guys, come in away. Let me know any thoughts you have on the side, how you're tracking along. Any questions, as always, subscribe to the channel as well, edging our way to 900. So if you get us there, that'd be nice. And we'll catch you later in the week.